Hey, I'm Miss Cern. Let's get started. In this video, we're going to talk about categories of triangles and quadrilaterals, which in the last video we learned were three-sided polygons and four-sided polygons. So here we go. Let's start with triangles. Triangles can be categorized in a couple of different ways. One way is by the sizes of their angles. If a triangle has all acute angles, which recall we previously discussed that acute means between zero and 90 degrees, so small. If a triangle has all acute angles, guess what it's called? That's right, an acute triangle. If a triangle has one right angle in it, remember we discussed a right angle is 90 degrees, then guess what it's called? A right triangle. And if a triangle has one obtuse angle, obtuse means an angle that's bigger than 90 degrees, but less than 180. If it has an obtuse angle, it's called an obtuse triangle. So that's one way to categorize triangles. Another way to categorize them is by the lengths of their sides. So if all sides are equal, it's called an equilateral triangle. Now, if only two sides are equal, then it's called an isosceles triangle. And if no sides are equal, do you know what that's called? That's right, it's a scalene triangle. So that's another way to categorize triangles by the lengths of their sides. Now we're gonna categorize quadrilaterals. Quadrilaterals, quad means four, are four-sided polygons. If you specify that a quadrilateral has the extra characteristic, besides just having four sides, of having one pair of those sides parallel to each other, then that's what's known as a trapezoid. If you further specify that not just one pair of sides is parallel, but two pairs, then you have a parallelogram. If you say not only do the pairs have to be to the pairs of sides have to be parallel, but in fact they have to meet at right angles, then you have what we all recognize is a rectangle. So the definition of a rectangle is a parallelogram that has a right angle. We only have to specify one right angle, but if it has one, then all of them will be right angles. If we further specify that all of the sides have to be equal, then we have a regular quadrilateral, which we all know is called a square. But the definition of a square is a rectangle because it has all the characteristics of a rectangle. It's a parallelogram and it has right angles, but it has the characteristic, the extra characteristic that all sides have equal length. And then there's another category of quadrilaterals, which is a subcategory of parallelogram that is called a rhombus. This is a parallelogram that has all equal sides, but does not necessarily have right angles like a square does. So there are relationships between all of these quadrilaterals, and I expect that my students know them. For example, I expect that my students know that a rectangle is a parallelogram, guaranteed by definition, but a parallelogram is not necessarily a rectangle. So some of the questions that I might ask my students would be to read a statement about quadrilaterals and determine if the, the statement is true or false. Like, all squares are quadrilaterals. Well, is that true or false? If you said true, you're right, because a square has four sides. It is a quadrilateral, right? Any polygon with four sides is a quadrilateral. How about if I said all rectangles are squares? Is that true? Well, if you can envision even one rectangle that's not a square, then it's false. And in this case, it is false because in order to be a square, a rectangle has to have all sides equal. And by the definition of a rectangle, that's not necessary. All that has to be the case is that it has to be a parallelogram and it has to have a right angle. How about if I said, if it's a square, then it's definitely a rhombus. Would that be true? Remember the definition of rhombus is a parallelogram that has all equal sides. So if a square meets those characteristics, then that would be true, and it does. A square is a parallelogram. We don't call it a parallelogram, we call it a square, but in fact, it does have two pairs of parallel sides and all the sides are equal. Those are the two characteristics of a rhombus. So that statement would be true. How about this one? Some parallelograms are not trapezoids. Okay, well, what we're saying here is you can envision a parallelogram that doesn't have the characteristics of a trapezoid. So what are the characteristics of a trapezoid? 
A trapezoid has four sides and at least one pair of the sides is parallel. Well, does a parallelogram meet that definition? Definitely. It has four sides, it's a quadrilateral, just like a trapezoid, and it has not one but two pairs of parallel sides. If it only had one, it would still be a trapezoid. It's okay if it has an extra pair of parallel sides. So um, some parallelograms are not trapezoids would be false. They all are. All par parallelograms are trapezoids. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. That helps other students to find the video.